untraditional sense of relationships. They are relationships that don't include an engagement or proposal, of which the methods are classified as unfavorable or untraditional. Unfavorable means the methods didn't form healthy emotional bonds and may have been destructive. Untraditional means the methods weren't passed down from the prior generation, or they are dishonorable or new. Why aren't some guys committing? Too many guys are being taken advantage of at an early age, and guys rarely get to tell their stories. As a result, too many guys are pulling trains on young ladies, avoiding the opportunity of getting to know the young ladies on a personal and spiritual level. Too many guys are abandoning their gals after having created a child inside of them, or thereafter the baby is born. And those guys tend to perceive being a father as a stolen choice instead of an asset or privilege. Often this behavior is to avoid any obligations of taking care of the child, and this form of abandonment been on the rise. There are three spiritual characters that fewer guys are embodying after that of being caring, fruitful, and loving before intimacy with the eternal mate. Guys who are taught their self-worth is to be formed with ethical values, acknowledge those characters. But guys who are taken advantage of aren't taught their self-worth means more to embody an angelic personification through ethical values. These are major reasons why guys lack respect for mother figures and gals. Becoming godly does require effort, and without those three characters, love wars can become the alternative. In 2 Corinthians 4:16, Paul said, For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perishes, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Why do couples become impatient before marriage? They may be unwilling to engage in face-to-face -face matters as a leader or team player, by being visualized as a couple, respected as a couple, taking a stand as a couple, and believe as a couple. All can hinder growth, and to stand as a couple, you ought to know what you stand for first as an individual. And communication skills, core values, family values, stressful situations such as child support, paying bills, or repaying debt obligations are responsibilities that come with being an adult. When either in the relationship hinders prayers, holding in those suppressed emotions can create chaos. And when couples avoid commitment, the relationship can go for a bumpy ride. A partner may cause violence for aggressive sexual tendencies, alcohol, drugs, or even validation of being right. Although vows state tell death do your part and for better or worse. It seems many couples are agreeing to the worst part when either partner doesn't allow the other partner to excel in life. Or couples are agreeing to the death part when either partner kills the other partner for another lover or an insurance policy. Some people in upscale communities believe it is easier to explain the death of a spouse than divorce. These are selfish expressions and criminally insane thoughts, but actually, not enough couples are taking it all in from the beginning, or leaving room for error. Self-destruction or denial. It is voluntary destruction of something by itself, a counterproductive and self-defeating habit formation. Of which a person denies oneself happiness but instead causes pain, deliberately or inadvertently. Self-destruction is an umbrella term for a variety of self-damaging patterns, from doing things that lead to failure, habitual tendencies, or even recklessness. As with the opposite trait of greed, self-destruction represents dysfunction in a person's fundamental relationship with life. A person with greed fears that something vital is lacking or missing from life, therefore they constantly desire to have more. A person with self-destruction, in contrast, feels that something fundamentally bad or toxic is consuming their life, and desires to keep this under strict control. And an anxious young person may feel there is something about them that attracts, deserves, or provokes this type of treatment, and why else would such things happen? In relationships, they may even develop the same thoughts, of why they keep attracting the same types of people. Those are expressions of one or more traumatic experiences. With self-denial there is a splitting of the personality that feels this thing in me is to be ignored and suppressed by any means possible, and to whatever cost. The person feels that their very being must be kept under strict control. The urge to self-destruct doesn't necessarily involve literal or physical behavior. Self-destructive behaviors can be acute, mild, or severe. Widespread forms of self-destructive behaviors can include alcohol abuse, compulsive gambling, drug abuse, eating disorders, or even sexual addiction. How players can change the self-destruct? Players must allow God to be the leader in every part of their life, to overcome obstacles, this includes the heart, mind, and soul. Jesus said, A good man out of the good treasures of the heart bringeth forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasures bringeth forth evil things. Matthew 12:35. God appoints those seeking the atonement for their sins, to enjoy his salvation not to endure his wrath. They must acknowledge the webs of destruction they place on others with a rebellious and sinful nature. They don't have to feel a sense of superiority over others, without applying the entire biblical knowledge in their lives. The privilege of superiority comes with a responsibility to remain fruitful to God and in a relationship. Jesus also said, Whoever looked on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery. Matthew 5 2, No one wants to be surrounded by destruction and violence. If players want to become the first fruit in a gal's life, they ought to acknowledge a change of the heart about God themselves, and a higher righteousness is needed. 
Why do players get perceived as spiritually bankrupt? With players embodying multiple relations with selfless pride, they are not using their willpower to become righteous. It appears they are serving this behavior. Whatever you serve is where your heart manifests, when you are spiritually bankrupt you will serve anything. Embodying spirituality requires growth and effort, and it is a free will choice to trust in God. Why the right guy or gal is not justified as being genuine? Ordinarily, most seekers think they will find the right person. But once the right person surfaces, then you rationalize about their existence in your life. Either they have different core values, religious beliefs, or family traditions. Of which can result in the other partner, showing less compassion and enthusiasm. It can be difficult in a relationship when a partner isn't as passionate about matters dear to the heart and avoids being genuine. In a relationship sharing opinions are a common denominator of the beliefs and values, especially when it means everything. Because experiencing each other's culture can help develop common or similar beliefs and values that a couple can take a stand for. Sharing requires putting the unlikable differences together to compare notes, and thereafter measuring the success by God's standards. But generally, we desire validation from strangers first, when these are individuals we don't know. If this is the case, before things go wrong, take a step back to acknowledge the misunderstandings. In a marriage, getting outside validation doesn't leave much room for politeness or submission. And you must be genuine with yourself to value clear advice rather than validation. Formally it is best to join a church community, with individuals who can give you clear advice. When you don't value a righteous sinner's clear advice, you will value an unrighteous sinner's validation for the cares of the heart. Also, needing to feel justified about personal beliefs, opinions, or values in a church community can lead to a false hope of God's expectations. Why couples are fearful of delegating as a couple on social networks? Many are unwilling to measure their relationship with God's standards. The traditional sense of relationships represents vows with God and vows with others. And the untraditional sense of relationships represents the failure, habitual tendencies, and recklessness of man and womankind. If you deliberately choose to influence others through the untraditional sense of relationships, keep in mind this is consistent with doing things in vain. Which means you represent and vow to nothing. With core values being distorted by social trends, most couples' emotions are up in the air. And literally, some couples' lives are put on hold waiting for social views to change to new perspectives. Relationships in religious colleges and universities the success rate of marriages is higher than in public colleges and universities, yet still, there are players and playgirls on the down low. Players at religious colleges may take advantage of a gal, just like any other college or university, but it doesn't happen as often. While attending a southern church that had a religious school organization, I noticed some gals had been forced to attend the religious school, after already becoming a stripper or whore. Which meant, they had already slept with several guys. This didn't stop the gals from finding a husbandman, however, some students were leaving the religious school without an eternal mate both males and females. Some students didn't marry the first person they dated, often it took them dating two to three individuals before finding an eternal mate. Formally they married then the female got pregnant, or informally the female got pregnant and then they married. The age group this refers to ranges from 18 to 21. Also, I noticed, once a student had turned 21, if they hadn't married an eternal mate, finding one there almost became virtually impossible. Either they had past circumstances that held them back or were unable to connect, due to a parent abandoning them at an early age. And if the active parent made negative choices, those circumstances too became deciding factors, just as it is in public colleges and universities. This means, they too aren't necessarily thinking of a permanent relationship with the first or second person they date. In general, religious gals will do what other gals won't do after getting pregnant, they will accept the father's hand in marriage. Otherwise, the young gal may be forced to leave the religious school if the guy doesn't marry her. Religious schools have been able to keep the negative actions and behavior of students out of the public's view. Because religious organizations don't support any type of vainness. All this is happening all over America. None is perfect no not one. Relationship roles approaches. Traditional, the man supports the family, and the woman's time and focus are spent keeping the house. Both partners spend the same amount of time and energy working, and the income earned by the man is shared and used for the needs of everyone in the household. Cons. The man can withhold finances for maintaining bills for the house. Or the man can earn very little wages, and all needs aren't met. Or the man can spend the finances recklessly on things such as alcohol and drugs etc. Or the woman feels her more ambitious talents aren't being used. Or one partner rarely gets to share their emotions, and feelings of being left out linger. Otherwise, things can run smoothly. Egalitarian, both men and women work to support the family, and they share the household and parenting duties 50 50 -ths. Cons. One partner rarely gets to share their emotions, and feelings of being left out linger. Otherwise, things can run smoothly. Nebulous, 
it is unclear whether the man or woman works to support the family because the family's attitude about gender roles constantly changes. And so, it is unclear who will support the family, or who will do household and parenting duties. Cons. No one supports the family, and no one does household and parenting duties. Both partners share their emotions, and feelings of being left out still linger. Of which abuse and neglect are visible. Here, it doesn't matter whether the man or woman is the breadwinner or homemaker, everything is on a sliding scale based on the attitudes of the two partners. And the lack of consciousness and sense of right principles can lead to resentment and strife. Undefined masculinity. Often gender roles involve strengths and weaknesses that attribute to behavior, Christian core values, equality, expectations, personality, personal core values, social identity, social scripts, responsibilities, reputation, respect, rights, etc. Gender roles used to refer to the traditional model roles such as manliness and womanish charm, beautiful and handsome, etc. Whereas the man worked outside the house to earn money to support the family, the woman cleaned and took care of the kids, for the house to run smoothly. Nowadays there are three relationship approaches such as traditional, egalitarian, and nebulous. According to recent studies traditional and egalitarian gender role approaches seem to satisfy most couples who live very structured lives, and the nebulous approach seems to be stressful for one or both partners. Rebellious youth believe since there are three relationship options, I don't have to follow the traditional model. Nor do I have to respect my father or mother in my appearance and behavior. This generation is changing the way you perceive femininity or masculinity through conditions of gender roles. Now masculine doesn't just mean respect me I'm a man, it means I want to express the new essence of masculinity without giving up all my traditional gender roles. Some guys acknowledge being a high-maintenance male, without acknowledging it means embodying masculinity. It still involves feeling handsome, dressing like a male, and walking masculine. Still, a masculine guy has boldness and strength, they use their mannish charm rather than, cowardice, indecisiveness, and evasiveness. And still, the masculine guy is also macho. Conclusion while some people value change of traditional gender roles, to share household and work duties and obligations. Other people rebel against the traditional sense of relationships to meditate on alcohol, drugs, or sex to avoid facing fears. And after a while, it becomes too difficult to visualize themselves in natural light. You won't change what you won't acknowledge. Just using the quote, let the chips fall where they may, doesn't show guidance and support as an adult when you do have kids. It is possible to share gender roles without abandoning all traditional roles, and it is possible to plan strategies by making strategic moves while facing fears. We develop our relationship expectations based on earning potential, logistics, personal values, and personality. Also, our upbringing, location, religion, and social circle all play a role in defining how gender and tradition will factor into our home and professional lives. Statistics showed in the US women filed for divorce 80% more than men. In 2014 there were an estimated 813,862 divorces and marriages 2,140,272. And in 2013 there were an estimated 832,157 divorces and marriages 2,081,301. Though people getting a divorce aren't the same ones getting married, therefore, calculating percentage rates during a given year continues to be inaccurate. Not all states report divorce rates. The divorce count is based on the total population, not the total married population. The average marriage lasts in the US for about 8 years or less. Before 2001 statistics showed economic downs prompted some couples to remain together furthermore, divorce and marriage rates were lower with economic downs. In the South younger couples marry for the first time, due to average lower household income, and there was no competition. In America, divorce rates were lower in blue states and higher in red states, and it came down to family values in blue states. Statistics showed states that had more Catholics and Lutherans were the states with lower divorce rates which were Midwest and Northeastern states. Also states where there are fewer Roman Catholics younger couples marry more. People who had been married before were more likely to get a divorce. Couples who have been married 35 years or more are less likely not to get a divorce. The common domestic disputes were chores, in-laws, quality time, sex, and money. And couples were at an increased risk of divorce who disagreed over money. Statistics showed highly educated people marry at a later age while living with a partner unmarried. Statistics also showed 2014 in the US there were 107 million unmarried people age 18 and older. Unmarried people included those who were divorced, never married, or widowed. The never married groupings made up 63%, divorced 24%, and widowed 13%. Of this statistic, women made up 53% and men 47%. The failed marriages and relationships made up the landscape of single women raising fatherless children. And divorce wasn't the overall reason more kids were suffering in calamity. 
lack of educational and negative behavior circumstances played major factors resulting in homelessness, incarceration, juvenile delinquency, rapes, runaways, substance abuse, and teen pregnancy. Divorcees in Deuteronomy 24 1-4 it says when, a man hath taken a wife, and marry her, and it comes to pass that she finds no favor in his eyes because he hath found some uncleanness in her, then let him write her a bill of divorcement, and give it in her hand, and send her out of his house. It says she can marry another man, if he divorces her, the former husband cannot marry her again she is defiled. When a gal is willing to give a guy divorce, she is admitting to being defiled, and the unwillingness to change the defilement to remain in the marriage. With man being the first fruits of a marriage, this gives him the ability to acknowledge judging righteous judgment, when it comes to a gal's defilement during a marriage. The guy's observation of his gal's actions and behavior is usually spot on, and whether she is willing to remain defiled after the divorce. This is one major reason divorce rates are on the rise, and why more people, in general, are defiled. After the couple marries, either one or both may cheat outside the marriage increasing STDs probability, but in a marriage, you have to seek help to rid of STDs. Because this too plays a factor. There are two ways to be free of cancers and diseases without reoccurring hospital visits by increasing natural foods and vitamin intake. Both partners often carry baggage into marriage, some of which include past suppressed emotions and thoughts. Sometimes either partner just needs an ear for listening without judging. When both have virtually given up on a united outcome because neither was heard throughout the marriage. Guys and gals both have gotten cold-hearted these days, and it probably is due to upbringings or reoccurring stress. But typically, everything on the planet moves like a worrying type of creature. Divorce men, women, and children can heal, and divorce affects innocent children more than anyone. And I do believe God had the children in mind, to handle with care even though the wounds are unbearable. The goal of co-parenting is to make sure the kids' needs are met. Women often protect their kids during co-parenting, but it can overshadow the abuse, drugs, and violence of others. Protecting them from their father isn't always a suitable option. Justified in masturbation. To justify is to show an action, claim, statement, etc., an excuse, or reason for something done. It can mean as a debit for bail to justify as certainty. It can also mean self-assurance for the lack thereof to justify being right about something. A need to feel justified happens during long periods of abuse, abandonment, or neglect. One out of three people in the world suffers from justification assurance or certainty naturally starting from newborn stages. It is not immoral to feel emptiness, but to feel justified can sometimes involve a lack of true discernment when endangering or hindering others. And to masturbate is the stimulation of one's genitals generally for a sexual orgasm or self-gratification. With masturbation justifications, neither self-assurance of being right or self-gratification of being sexually satisfied creates a supportive foundation for a long-term marriage. Either creates empty discernment, feelings, and emotions for what is self-righteous. You cannot show concern for others suffering through calamity while, valuing self-gratification of sexual desires excessively. Although this is only one major way many people pretend to be justified, it is a short-term satisfaction while marriage is a long-term benefit. Various levels of infidelity. 01. A parent pressuring a child to play the spouse role. 02. Emailing a lover or soon-to-be lover. 03. Emotionally occupied with a former partner. 04. Fantasizing about someone else other than a spouse. 05. Fondling someone other than a spouse. 06. Having sex or kissing someone other than a spouse. 07. Intimacy without physical contact. 08. Making out with someone other than a spouse. 09. Masturbation to an image of another. 10. Meeting up with a lover or soon-to-be lover. 11. Phone sex. 12. Sending nude videos. 13. Text message sex. If your partner doesn't conform to certain lustful desires, you don't hold grudges against them. And you don't go ruining your partner's life when they don't oblige to your list of demands. Anger and bitterness over miscommunications aren't reasons to form new ones. Relationships aren't objects of lustful desires, there are concepts of commitments that must be honored with righteous judgment on either side. And without honoring them righteously they tend to fall apart. Although these are forms of infidelity it isn't necessary to take action against your partner. You ought to keep an open mind about the other person's fears and struggles. Often the fear of struggles are lines that ought not to be crossed, and this is when you proceed with caution. Understand their needs and don't let your emotions get in the way before confronting them. Think logically throughout any verbal conversation, as you consider your and the partner's health and needs, and then determine the consequence of circumstances. Remember no one is perfect. In most marriages that last 50 years or longer, a spouse has cheated but the couple was forgiving above anything else. And actually, it is possible to forgive the partner 70 times 70, just as Jesus said to do with a brother. Otherwise, if you aren't a forgiving person you ought not, marry anyone it will only lead to a divorce. Ultimately it is best to get to know a person before hopping into bed with them.
remember it isn't all about you, it is about making the relationship last. Men, women, and respect respect is admiring, someone or something, deeply, as a result of their abilities, qualities, or achievements. Respect refers to the feelings, rights, traditions, or wishes of others. Respect also means respecting a particular aspect, detail, or point. Either definition means to show esteem towards someone or something that you appreciate. When you appreciate their abilities, qualities, or achievements you are recognizing their self-worth. But to appreciate others, you also have to recognize and respect your self-worth. All humans have rights and responsibilities, positive or negative to respect the feelings, traditions, and wishes of others. These are contemporary and modern-day concepts that were established so man and womankind can balance between the extremes of heaven and hell. Having said that, guys and gals are of equal value, and this should be acknowledged everywhere. Bottom line, when you find a gal that meets at least three of the requirements on your checklist, ask her hand in marriage once she does prove that she is worth the effort and time. And be patient with her throughout trial tests. Don't just string her along, because you won't necessarily find a gal that meets all requirements on the checklist. Core Values The term core value, aligns beliefs, morals, principles, responsibility, respect, self-learning, sense of hope and urgency, etc. Core values are considered to be our emotional GPS. Each business and individual have important and true value, and the combinations are never duplicated. In business, it is a principle that guides an organization's internal conduct as well as its relationship with the external world. Also, core values help companies to determine if they are on the right path of fulfilling their goals by creating an unwavering guide. And values are summarized in the mission statement or a statement of core values. Core values are the genuine importance of happiness, health, and well-being. A few common values that drive human beings are accomplishments, family, freedom, integrity, justice, and safety. Your life will feel off if you ignore the value. Whereas you may experience negative feelings such as a feeling of discontentment or out of sort, or loss of energy. Even unjustified anger can pop up to work against you. Everything will get right once you honor and recognize your self-value. Only you can articulate those that define your true self, and there are no right or wrong values to hold. Defining, honoring, and using our values is about giving ourselves choices and opportunities to feel good about life and self. We find peace by honoring our own and respecting those held by others. Core Values List Authenticity Achievement Adventure Authority Autonomy Balance Beauty Boldness Compassion Challenge Citizenship Community Competency Contribution Creativity Curiosity Determination Fairness Faith Fame Friendships Fun Growth Happiness Honesty Humor Influence Inner harmony justice kindness. Knowledge leadership learning. Love loyalty meaningful work. Openness optimism peace. Pleasure poise popularity. Recognition religion reputation. Respect responsibility security. Self respect service spirituality. Stability success status. Trustworthiness wealth wisdom. Christian core values. Christ discipleship holiness. Love power prayer. Truth. The disciples were Jesus' personal followers during his life and they were the twelve apostles. Nowadays a disciple is a follower or student of a leader, philosopher, or teacher. Discipleship is the process by which disciples grow through Jesus Christ, as the Father and Holy Spirit. In which we adore and love Him with our actions, behavior, thoughts, and whole heart. And the process involves devotion, obedience, prayer, purification, and testimony to be Christ-like. Holiness is the state of being holy, according to a doctrine or religion. It is the purification or sanctification of a believer, that is baptized, cleansed, and refined through Jesus Christ and the Bible. Power is the ability to act or do something in a particular way, especially as a faculty or quality. It is an authority or right that is delegated or given to a body of people or persons. To it is the ability or capacity to direct or influence the behavior of events or others. Prayer is a solemn request for expression or help of thanks that is addressed to God or an object of worship. It is a religious service, especially a regular one, at which people gather to pray together. To it is an earnest hope or wish. Truth is the quality or state of being true, truthful, and trustworthy. Christian Fundamental Social Values Faith Grace Hope Love Service Peace Faith is complete confidence or trust in someone or something, that mirrors the vows of commitments God has for His people. It is a strong belief in God or a doctrine of religion based on spirituality rather than physical proof. Also, it is a strongly held belief or theory. Grace is simple elegance or refinement of movement. It is courteous goodwill, it is giving credit or honor to someone or something by one's presence. To it is an official period allowed for payment of the sum, which is due for compliance with condition or law, especially an extended period granted as a special favor. God's grace comes before our faith, and to reconcile mankind to himself is the grace that comes before our faith. Also, grace comes before good works. 
hope is a feeling of desire and expectation for a certain thing to happen, it is a feeling of trust. 2. It is when you want something to happen or be the case. Love is an intense feeling of deep affection. It is a person or thing that one loves and takes great interest and pleasure in. 2. It is something or someone that you like or enjoy very much. Service is the action of helping or doing work for someone. It is a system that supplies a public need such as communications, transportation, or utility. It is a ceremony of religious worship according to the prescribed form, the prescribed form for such a ceremony. 2. It is a perform routine maintenance or repair work. Peace is freedom from disturbance, tranquility. It is a period or state in which there is no war, and the war has ended. 2. It is a ceremonial handshake exchanged during a service in a church. Personal core values. Commitment compassion consistency. Courage creativity dependability. Education efficiency environmentalism. Fitness good humor honesty. Innovation loyalty motivation. Open-mindedness optimism passion. Patriotism perseverance positivity. Reliability respect service to others. Spirit of adventure. Ethics or moral philosophy. Either is a branch of philosophy that systematizes concepts of right and wrong conduct. Of the systematic concepts, the field of aesthetics and ethics are used to determine the validity of value, to comprise the branch of philosophy called axiology. Ethics is a disciplinary term that identifies just and unjust practices about moral duty. The standards uphold obligations to prevent and stop crime, and the system addresses human morality. Human morality is the consciousness and sense of right principles that define life's operative dynamics. When a human being ignores the moral demands and responsibility of life, it implies such has fallen below the human profile with existing as a whole. This will affect the individual negatively in all areas. And since human morality defines life's operative dynamics, your consciousness and sense data stores of right principles determine your core, personal or self-value. Three areas of study within ethics, applied ethics, concerning what a person is obligated, or permitted, to do in a specific situation or a particular domain of action. Metaethics, concerning the theoretical meaning and reference of moral propositions, and how their truth values, if any, can be determined. Normative ethics, concerning the practical means of determining a moral course of action. Definition. Aesthetics, a set of principles concerned with the nature and appreciation of beauty, especially in art. Just, based on our behavior according to what is morally fair and right. Unjust, not based on or behaving according to what is morally fair or right. Morality, principles concerning the distinction between right and wrong or good and bad behavior. The fundamental differences between ethics and value, ethics is a system of moral principles for conduct that addresses morality and helps to determine what is morally correct or incorrect in given situations. The value defines ideals and principles, which helps to make decisions about what is important in our lives. Values are the stimuli of our thinking and influence the emotional state of mind by acting as a motivator. Ethics are consistent, and values are different for each person. Because what is important for one person, may not be important for another person. Conclusion While ethics are consistently applied over time and remain the same for all human beings, values have an individualistic approach and remain stable, relatively unchanging, but can be changed over time due to an emotional event.